Hello and welcome back. It's the Clay Golem here. We are not in Foundry VTT, but we are on FoundryVTT.com. Uh, I wanted to have a little look at the um, the celebrations that are going on at the moment for Foundry. Um, and also, this is the anniversary celebrations, but also the content in version 12 that has now been released. Uh, and also what's coming up a little bit in the future. Just to, there's lots of stuff out there. There was a there was a live stream that was almost three hours long. So I just want to try and distill some of that stuff, give you guys the highlights, um, and point you in the direction where you can go find more information if you want to. So yeah, a bit different for what I normally do. Uh, so first of all, you can see on screen right in front of you, this is the um, this is the anniversary celebration week. Uh, yes, of course I'm late to the party. It's now. Saturday the 25th and I've missed a bunch of it. Well, I haven't missed it. I just haven't told you about it in time. Um, so, first of all, there was a version 12 release celebration live stream. Okay, you can go watch that. That's on their YouTube channel. Um, so you can go watch the whole thing. It is quite long. I am going to do some highlights of that in this video. Um, and then obviously if you want to know more or you want to see the full thing, you can go and do that. Um, so version 12 has been released, brilliant. There is an anniversary sale on at the moment. Now this started last Wednesday and it goes through until next Friday the 31st of May. So there is a sale on. If you are watching this video, you know, if you're not actually using Foundry at the moment and you're not sure whether you want to use Foundry, if you're going to, now is the time because you're gonna get discount off of that purchase for the Foundry software itself. Um, but there's also some, it's got it just down below a bit, special offers and things. Um, we're talking about 20% off um, if you purchase it during this period, but there's also 20% off of some of the um, the content that they've provided for us as well, some adventures and stuff like that. And there's also some partnership um, sales as well. So some content creators are joining up to also give discounts off their stuff. So it's a really good time to go and look for some bargains, maybe something you've always wanted. It's like, oh, I really wanted that set, um, just haven't really got around to it, haven't really been able to afford it. Now is the time. Okay, so a couple of things to point out on here. Um, so on Monday the 27th, there is a future content showcase, which could be quite interesting. Now just bear in mind, all of these times on here, just on the left here, it's time zone, it's EDT. OK, so uh, certainly on my channel, we've got people all over the world. So a majority of you watching this will be from the US or from Great Britain. But we have people from Germany and Italy and China and Russia. And you guys are all over the place. <laughs> so it's really important to just bear in mind which time zone these things are happening in. So it's EDT. Uh, okay, so yeah, we've got this future showcase coming up um, and then we've got a Reddit and then a Discord Ask Me Anything session, which is probably going to be um, heavily inundated by content creators who are, you know, how, do, how does this work then? How do I integrate with this? What, what would that do? Um, and those kind of things. But obviously you can absolutely jump on there, ask your own questions. Every question is a good question. Uh, and then Friday the 31st, uh, there is a free Project Friday live stream. So if you're not aware of what free Project Friday is, what they do at Foundry is on a Friday, um, team members are able to go and work on little pet projects. So they stop working on their core day-to-day -day, uh, module or, or development series that they're currently assigned to, but they're allowed to go off and play with other things. So that means, yeah, I've always wanted to try and look at this. I always wanted to look at that. They get the opportunity to do that. I mean, it is work, but they get to work on what they want to work rather than what they've been assigned to work on. Um, so from that, there's been lots of Foundry features that have started off as somebody's side project where they just wanted to have a play, see if it was possible, see if this feature would be, you know, would work. And then they've picked it up and gone, actually, this is going to become a core feature. This is a really good idea um, and run with it. So it's a really nice thing to do. Um, and the whole anniversary, including the sale, ends at the 9 p.m. EDT on Friday the 31st. OK, so let's start off talking about the uh, V13 kickoff and patron poll. So this is uh, quite a... a a good thing for you to be aware of if you're not already so the poll is again it's open until the end of the anniversary if you choose to become a patron you can vote on what the focus will be 
for version 13. Okay, so you can actually have an opportunity to help shape where it's going. Um, so they do this every time. Um, obviously, there's stuff that they want to work on in the background. They've already listed. Um, but they get so many feature requests of what people would like it to do. They put it to the vote, which is a brilliant way to develop um, a package like this because they know how to focus their attentions because we're telling them where we want them to focus their attentions. So what's coming up in the next for version 13? What can you vote for? So again, you can just search for this. Um, Canvas cards, so existing card system, a bit of an overhaul on that. Now what I really like about the way they do this is they tell us what, if they go ahead with this feature, what this feature definitely will do. That's what they will be doing with it. Um, but they've also got, you know, it might do this as well. There's no promises on that, but that's obviously something they would like it to be able to do. But time constraints and everything else, that may not get fully implemented or implemented at all, but they certainly are going to aim for it. And I really like the fact they make a promise and then they say, hey, we're also going to try and do this. That's, that's really nice. So overhaul of the Canvas cards. If you don't use card decks, that's probably not going to be useful for you at all. Uh, combat turn markers, so just an improvement when you're in combat to make it really clear whose go it is and things like that. Uh, for me, using combat carousel, that's probably not going to add much for me personally. But again, remember that sometimes it's a case of like if we put this feature in, it enables us to then build on from that something else. Uh, the one about document tags here. Now, I'm, they're talking about document tags, and I read this and I thought, hmm, are they basically implementing inter internally something like the trigger, the um, the tagger mod? Uh, it certainly kind of sounds like it. It would mean we can actually tag actors and tiles and things like that and link them together better. Um, useful, yes. Critical, don't know. Depends how you run your games. Um, but anyway, yeah, come and have a read. Manual Fog of War. So Vision works really well in Foundry VTT. I really like the way that um, walls work with regard to vision, um, light sources and things like that. Um, but there's a Manual Fog of War option that's being put forward where you can actually, as the DM, you can deliberately obscure areas. Man you know, Manually you can draw an area to say this is Fog of War or you can un-Fog of War an area if you want to. So reveal parts of the map as they go through. Now at the moment the way it works is everything's Fog of War um, until a player's been there and then, you know, then it's not Fog of War anymore. Um, and they can move out of that area. They can still see the map, but they can't see tokens and things. And you can either clear all of the fog of war or none of it. So this would give you more flexibility. Again, it kind of depends how you run your games um, to how you want that to work. Number five is a player client. So rather than your players joining through a web browser, they would actually have a free, and that's really important, a free software download that they can do which gives them an end client that they can log in through now on the face of it it's like yes so what what does that give them but they really um the the might feature so bear in mind this could not happen the might feature um because you're talking foundry to foundry rather than foundry to browser it gets around some of those security issues around the ss um ssl the uh, secure socket layer certifications and things that you need to be able to use video and audio over there. Now most people by the sounds of it use Discord for all of their voice chat while using Foundry for actually running the game. Uh, obviously there's other options, there's Google Meets and you know all sorts of things that you could use instead. This potentially opens up um, the option for not needing to use those and being able to do that directly through Foundry is how much of a benefit that is only you can decide how your group works i mean if i've got my if my game's not loaded because i self-host if my game's not loaded my players can't communicate to me so guess what we do it through discord <laughs> so i'm using discord anyway um and then when the game's running i might as well stay on discord uh so you know again might not work for you uh special effect regions so being able to create regions where effects are actually operating within, there's a, a few kind of details here. I'm not going to read out every single word. You can come and look at it for yourself. 
Um, but basically extending what they've already done, not that we've had a chance to look at it yet, um, to do with those region behaviours. And we've mentioned this before where you can select an area to say, hey, the weather doesn't exist in this area. And we've got a workaround with the mod at the moment, but version 12 should be able to do that for us. Um, but also providing pre-configured animations for things like fire, frost, bubbling liquids. So that you can actually draw areas out that have these effects running on them. So visually, yeah, really nice. Uh, really nice way to do it. Um, we can do that with animated tiles and things at the moment. But this obviously would bring that in to be a core system. Therefore, would integrate better with other functions. Um, drag token measurement. This is essentially drag ruler that we've had installed and we've used in quite a number of our games where it does the measuring for us. But this is going to bring this as a core part of Foundry rather than an add-on module um, and, and just bring that within house and all the power that comes with those features. Now it talks about, you know, being able to potentially might be, you know, that you can do different things to that ruler to make it prettier and, and stuff like that. Uh, be extendable, allowing modules and systems custom data for the ruler and things like that so yeah that's basically taking a module that exists integrating it fully um, into the system as it is uh, and the last option we've got here is token effects animation now we've got and we've looked at quite a number of animation effects on on our tokens for spell effects and things like that and this is again it's bringing some of those you know uh, provides an initial library of around 10 visual token effects so that tokens on fire it's frozen solid it's got magic shield it's turned to stone mirror image and things and we've seen all that because again a lot of these uh, these options are things where people have gone but this is what we want it to do foundry doesn't do it so somebody's created a mod to do that and the mods as we know are really really good and we love those content creators that are creating those mods for us whether it's uh, monks or ripper or all of the others that are doing that really really good um, but this would bring some of those functions internal which makes them simpler to use it makes them more compatible of course because they're a direct part of foundry and some of those when we get those challenges we're trying to get things to work together um, sometimes there's a few conflicts and things you know like what's controlling concentration now is it midi qol is it foundry is it <laughs> it's going to simplify a lot of those things for us and make our game smoother so um yeah that's the options on board so you can read through that um if you are a patron you can go and vote on what you would like all right so let's have a quick look at the um this is the uh version 12 plan and themes um, and as you can see it starts off here talking about the patron vote winner from the last vote so it's a patron um, poll inarguably was very very close um, and the one that uh, there we go the event triggers is the one that won so we're going to see event triggers in version 12 we know that they've been talking about it for a long time and obviously that poll ran quite a while ago uh, and that event triggers, so I was just saying about a lot of these things are bringing mods effectively internally, redeveloping them as a core part of Foundry. This, of course, is a big chunk of Monk's active tile triggers that we use a lot, and it's bringing them in-house. Now, that's not to say that it replaces Monk's active tile triggers, because Monk's does a lot of stuff. And we haven't had a chance yet to play with the version 12 event triggers equivalent to see how how powerful that is we will do that but we're not doing it yet um mostly because we want things to stabilize um and the the one that it won out over was terrain and cover now slightly annoying terrain and cover um was voted second in the last vote it's it's not here it's not an option this time um what i would really like to to think is that they went well, look everybody's asking for it so we're going to do that anyway <laughs> um, but it doesn't actually talk about that so um yeah it's it's uh, i'm not sure not sure why but it'd be really nice if they did if they did uh, terrain and cover you know and that is what that means is that's covering things like um we use 
the um, Ripper's wall height module um, that can then you, you can use cover to show partial cover, full cover and stuff like that from missile weapons and automatically integrate those calculations into combat. Uh, and terrain is things like being able to create um, rough terrain. So yeah, it's gonna you're going to have to use twice your movement to cross over this um this loose sand this rubble etc being able to create patches on our map that's automatically going to give those terrain uh penalties benefits whatever they might be so it'd be nice if they did that all right so what have we actually got in version 12 scene and regions uh event triggers so we knew about this already this is the one i'm most excited for in this of course um allows you to define scripted events that occur dynamically uh, so that yes pressure plate traps um, triggers for lights triggers for scenes and things um, if you've not seen any of the videos where they're talking about it go and watch them because it looks really really powerful and a lot of the stuff that I've used monks active tile triggers for we should be able to do with this as a core thing so at the moment, I'm thinking, hmm, I'm not going to need Monk's active tile triggers anymore. I can I can bin that and just use the core features, but I haven't played with it. And of course, Monk's going to be looking at this, and I suspect right this very moment is busy tapping away, going, right, okay, how what do I need to do to modify my module? Because so much of that module now is core stuff. So what's left over and basically repackaging that to say, okay now my active tile triggers builds on what was what foundry does rather than duplicates it um yeah scene regions and we talked about that with weather effects and things like that that we can we can box off an area and say make it rain only here or make it rain everywhere except here or whatever we want to do event triggers which is very much monks active tile triggers and the trigger interaction control so that's pretty much those two things wrapped up but again at the moment do i need to update to version 12 to access those no i don't because i've got monks active tile triggers um and we've got the our, our effects that we we're able to block off that we did in the curse of strad for the death house foggy outside not inside the house so there's also some other things here so canvas and object a uh, canvas objects and vision improvements so global illumination redesign and a few things like that so even if you're not using a lot of the functions and stuff when we upgrade to version 12 we will need to go back and look at every single one of our single one of our scenes and check our lighting and stuff make sure that's all working um part of the user interface redesign that continues so again there's a bit more detail on what that looks like uh, and then they're talking about some of the other architectural improvements at the back end stuff so uh, dice rolling version three um, things that that's changing prose mirror editor websocket and database optimization things that might not on the surface really give you much um, much change you might not notice much on the surface but it's all happening in the background and that will affect the way that certain mods work and stuff so quite a lot of stuff going on um, obviously the big one is being the scene regions and event triggers that we knew about which is really really good um, so what about updating I'm not going to do it <laughs> not yet uh, and the reason why is because with any kind of software release um, I want other people to fumble with it uh, and point out all the bugs because if I upgrade now one I've got quite a big job of going through to update my stuff to make sure it's all functional um, just for them potentially to release one two maybe three like smaller patches just to fix some little things that have happened um, and I don't want to be stuck in that world of oh I haven't got a working system under version 12 um, for a few weeks while they do those tweaks also there has been an update to the D&D 5th edition game engine uh, and that's been sitting there for um, for I think it might even be a couple of weeks it's been sitting there ready for me to upgrade and I have not upgraded that's very deliberate for the same reason is if I upgrade and then suddenly I'm upgrading to version 12 and things I'm going to be going through and having to check everything because the game engine updated and then I'm going to have to check it all because Foundry's updated as well 
So I'm just not going to touch it for now. And I'm going to let um, Foundry settle a little bit. And then I'm going to upgrade Foundry. Then I'm going to upgrade the uh, the D&D game engine immediately once they've also probably had to do a few smaller updates and things like that to make sure it's compatible with version 12 of Foundry. And then, of course, we've got all of our mods. So people like Monk and Ripper um, and all those other guys, there's tons of different people out there doing this, of course, they are now all looking at their mods going right okay i need to re i need to rebuild it i need to update it i need to change it to make sure it's functioning now look at something like midi qol that's a big chunky complicated mod and if i upgrade to version 12 right now and upgrade my game engine i guarantee midi qol is not going to function the same way that it was just because so much has changed um even just scrolling back down here, it's talking about this dice rolling thing um, and changes to the, the dice rolling API. So MIDI QOL absolutely accesses dice rolling. So there is almost guaranteed going to be a, a couple of, I'm going to say issues. They're not necessarily issues, but there's going to be some slight changes, some incompatibilities um, that will need to be addressed. Um, uh, Ponzi, that's the one who does it, isn't it? Posny, Posny, Ponzi, can never get the letters the right way around. Uh, who does MIDI QOL? They got they got a bit of work ahead of them to get that compatible. Uh, so I'm going to wait for that to settle down as well. So it might be a good couple of weeks before we upgrade to version 12. But what my plan is is I will do that unless you all put in the comments and say no, please don't stick with version 11. Um, my plan is that I will upgrade to version 12 so that one of the things we will do is look at stuff we've already created and then do some videos on how do we now adapt what we've already got to make it version 12 compatible as well as building from um, building from scratch new scenes and things in version 12. So if we look at some of the stuff we've got like Curse of Strahd where we've used lots of monks active tile triggers are we going to be binning that to use the scene, new scene tools that we've got here, these new triggers in here. How are we going to adjust those over? Do we basically have to rebuild the whole thing from nothing? Or can we stick with monks powering those bits and just build new ones afterwards? And when we go back to things like Vandelva and Stormwreck Isle, how's that affecting our, our global lighting and all of those kind of things? So it's going to be quite a journey to do that. Uh, and of course, you're not under any obligation to update absolutely no obligation um, but I will because obviously some people are coming new to Foundry some people definitely will be updating and they'll be using version 12 so I at least should try to keep myself reasonably current he said be already being <laughs> four days behind the anniversary uh, so yeah just thought um, I'll share those things with you just have a little bit of chat about what's going on with Foundry at the moment it's all good stuff. Um, really, really positive. Uh, I love the fact that it's such a strong community that are supporting these things, putting forward their ideas, um, and, and that Foundry is going from strength to strength. It just keeps getting better. Uh, and a large part of that is due to the modding community who are just doing brilliant things. Absolutely brilliant. Right, I'm going to stop waffling. Um, but yeah, if you've got particular features you're excited to try out with version 12 or particular things in version 13 that you're hoping for, yeah, drop it in the comments. Um, yeah, absolutely. And of course, remember, leave a like. And if you're not subscribed, it would be appreciated. Thanks, everyone. You take care.